Hey guys, Mike from Boyer Bows here. Got our bow. I took it down from the last time we spoke. I was going to reduce it a little more. It's still three quarters at the spot where the riser meets uh, the handle, which is going to be part of the fade. And then it starts tapering down from three quarters to what would have been three eighths. And when I did that, um, it felt nice and springy, still very, very heavy, and the stick felt very stiff still. But uh, I felt like it was a good part, a good time for me to start, um, stop doing the big reduction and start working on the tillering. But before I start moving on to tillering, I'm going to add my tip overlays. And I already, as you saw, glued the riser down. Now, if you want to know how I glued the riser down, go back to the step one where I glued one part of the riser block to another part of the riser block. Basically what I did was the same process. I put a little bit of glue on the top of, uh, on this part of the bow, on the, of the wood, and on the bottom of the riser block. And I let a very thin coat, let that absorb and get almost just like tacky, not dry, but uh, tacky. And then I put a lot of glue, got really messy, and clamped this down. Clamped these together. Uh, held it in the clamps for 24 hours. Let it sit for another 24 hours afterward, and then I... Uh, 24 hours, took the clamps off. Another 24 hours just to let it harden up. And here we are. Now I know it looks pretty rough still, but that's, you know... That's okay. It'll it'll turn out attractive before we're done. Now you can see there's a lot of black ink on this thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm cutting out my arrow shelf. I'm cutting out my, um, I guess pistol grip riser is what you would call it, and I've cut off the tip overlay. Now what I did, I showed you in an, also in another video. I had already made the wedgy piece of Bacati for, I think it's pronounced Bacati, if it's not, forgive me, uh, Bacati wood, and all I did was I came, now remember you got to cut into the back of the bow here, well you don't have to, you can take the Bacati and glue and, and epoxy it down like this, or you can cut into the back of the bow, what I did was I just laid this on the wood like so, where I wanted it, and then um, drew a line, cut that out, and then what I'm going to do is pretty much come here. I'll sand. Could have been a little bit better cut, but what I'll pro what I'll do is I want this to end up like that. So I'm going to get some epoxy. I'm not going to use Tight Bond Three for this. I'm going to go to the hardware store, buy some. Not the five minute epoxy. There's there's two tens of kinds of epoxy I've seen. There's five minute epoxy, which means it's more or less cured in five minutes. And then there's the epoxy that sets up in five minutes but still takes several hours to fully cure, which is a much stronger epoxy, and that's the one I'm going for. Um, but the only stipulation is it has to be a wood, it has to be good for wood, and it has to be sandable. If it meets those two criteria, then I don't care what kind of epoxy you get as long as it's a good one. Um, or as long as it meets those two criteria. So what I'll do is I'll end up epoxying that down like this. I'm going to have to sand the tip off here. and uh, But I got a nice good contact flush thing there otherwise. And then I'll shape that when we're done. When, it, when it's fully set, I'll shape that and then I'll test it in the tillering process. I'll, I'll be working this thing constantly while tillering and that will let me know how sturdy, you know, I never really pull the bow back to full draw until the very end and so it's a gradual process and gradually and constantly testing this connection here so it's safe. I don't have any of the epoxy right now or I'd show you how to do that but uh, it's not that tough. You just glue it down I like to clamp it down as well with one good clamp and then maybe some uh, just you know even rubber bands would be a good idea if you don't have clamps. Okay so that's the tip overlays. We'll get into that more when they're fully clamped on. 
Uh, here is the riser block. Now, what you see here, I don't know if you can completely imagine this, but what's going to happen is this the black part's going to be gone. Okay? So I'm going to have this nice curved, almost like a pistol here, that my thumb and the web of my hand is going to, well, it's the opposite, my finger and thumb on each side are going to fit in here and then this part is going to be nice and round and fitting comfortably in the palm of my hand. Um, this part is the shelf. I'll come around here. I took, what I did here is I measured the width and then I went dead center. So it's going to be a center, almost center line shot here. It's not past center, but it's really close. And then I cut, I drew a straight line across and across here and all the way back to there and repeated it. And I came up, uh, I didn't really, I, I think it's three quarters of an inch. And then I just did a more or less diagonal line, came across here. This is just a guide almost. And then repeated the process over here. And this whole piece is going to be gone. And you may think that's a lot of wood to disappear, but look how much riser is still going to be left over. There's a lot of wood here. And that's going to, it's not even going to bend. That's the idea, guys. If you're going to do a center cut um, riser like that, you need a lot of wood behind it. And you got to make sure that there is absolutely no bend in this handle riser. Otherwise, if there's any bend, it could break because you've removed so much wood here. Obviously, I'm going to do that same process to the tip at the other end for the other tip overlay. And the way I like to, uh, I like to get into the uh, shelf, again, I don't have any power tools, is I just take my trusty saw and I, 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 I try to just cut the shelf only. So I'll just, I'll be cutting that and when I get down to the end here, then I will come in with my rasp and just sort of rasp all this extra stuff out. And the reason I do that is it's really hard to get a nice flat thing with a round rasp. It can be done. Ultimately, I'm going to even curve this a little bit. But for now, I want to just sort of come in and get this nice and flat. And, and I don't want to end up digging deeper into the riser this way because the rasp got away from me or I was put a little too much gusto into it. Okay, so that's where I am, and that's just going to be the quick step two here. Where are we? Let's just do a quick review here. The whole idea being that this is where we were. We were at the point where the bow was floor tillered. We went over that a little bit during the rain delay. I felt like taking it from three quarters down to three eighths was enough of a floor tiller that I could start reducing the wood in the more detailed tillering process. I didn't want to do any more gross tillering. Now if you still feel when you are at three quarters to three eighths that this is still too heavy for you, instead of reducing the tip again down to say a quarter, what I'm going to recommend is that you take this part down to five eighths. So it'll be five eighths down to three eighths. Okay, that's what I'm going to recommend if it's still too heavy for you. And then glue your riser block on after you get there. If it's still, if it's if it's too, um, if it's if it's uh, ready to go. If it's still too heavy, then I would reduce the entire limb, say down to uh, four eighths or half an inch down now to a quarter inch okay and at that point you're going to be pretty light you, know, you, you may not I mean five eighths to three eighths you probably can still get a 50 pound bow out of it or in that ballpark uh, four eighths or half an inch to a quarter inch you're looking at around maybe 35 pounds 30 pounds you know it's 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 a much lighter bow as it is I would say this bow right now is still about 80, 90 pounds before I do anything to it. All right, so that's where we are, and that's where we're gonna. That's the next step is to do those things. Oh, and you can see I'm also after I do the shelf here, I'm going to also rasp out this nice round uh, grip. Okay. Now I will do 
in this step two, I'm going to do a before and after. I'm not going to do a uh, uh, a whole series on me cutting this thing. I'm just using a saw on my rasp, guys. There's really not much to it. Um, but I'm going to do a before, I'm going to do an after, and then we'll go on to step three. All right? So any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, this is Mike from Boyer Bows. This is the before video for step two of how to make a flat bow. Talk to you later, guys.